Good morning. Habari asubuhi. Nzuri. I'm happy to be here. Amefurahia kuwa pamoja nanyi hapa. And today I want to talk about evangelism. Na leo tunataka kuzungumza juu ya uinjilisti. And this method I call experience God evangelism. Na hii tunasema kwamba ni kutambua uwepo wa Bwana katika uinjilisti. And how to help people experience God and bring them to Jesus. Na vile unaweza kuongoza watu kwa ajili ya ku kutangaza ukuu wa Yesu. In 1998, 15 years after I became a pastor, mwaka wa 1998 I felt like I was in heaven. Na akasikia kwamba sasa hayuko duniani ako mbinguni. And I smell sweet smell. Na akasikia arufu ya manikato ikinukia. I think from heaven. Akadhani kwamba hii imetoka mbinguni. I didn't know I can experience God like that. Hakujua kwamba anaweza kutambua uwepo wa Mungu kwa kiwango hiyo. It wake me up. Ikamuamsha. That the relationship with God can be so intimate kwamba uwe ushirika wake na Mungu huwe wa karibu sana that we can have this close relationship with him ili kwamba tukawe na ushirika ulio sawa pamoja na yeye and i said i really want to have this close relationship with god all the time na akasema kwamba ninatamani niwe na uhusiano huu wa karibu na Mungu kila wakati and experience him all the time na nikaweze kushuhudia yeye kila wakati a second thought came to me. I want to be like that evangelist too. Then I can pray for people and they can experience the power and the love of God like that. It opened my eye to ministry. Because in the past I have been just basically preaching the word of God. And now I realize that the ministry in God is not just preaching a word but also operation of the Holy Spirit. And which the Bible does talk about. But in the past I I never knew it. Lakini kitambo hakuweza kuelewa mambo haya. And I was very excited. Na akawa akonafura ilio ya ajabu. Up to today. Mpaka siku ya leo. That God is so good. Kwamba mungu ni muema ni muku wa ajabu. That we can experience him any time. Kwamba tinaweza kushudia uku wake wakati wawote. In that meeting I kept praying to God. Katika mkutano huwa ninaendelea kuomba kwa mungu. And on the way home in a public bus. Na hata akiwa katika gari la usafiri akiwa njiana anaenda sehemu zote. I want to raise my hand to praise God. Anatamani kwamba tu ainue mkono wake kwa ajili ya kumtukuza Bwana. But it was in a public bus. Lakini akiwa kwamba ako kwa gari lililo na watu wengi. It's not convenient to raise my hand like that. Hakika haionekani vizuri tu kwamba wewe uko ndani ya watu na umeinua mkono juu namna hii. So I put my hand against the window. Na akaweka mkono wake juu ya dirisha. So I'm not so obvious. Ambao wakaonekana tu ni hali ya kawaida. And I kept praising God and loving God. Na akaendelea kumtukuza Mungu na kumpenda Mungu. And when I was home I kept praying to God even though it was very late. Ah nilipokuwa ninaendelea kuomba mwili wangu ukawa uko mwepesi sana. And after that every day I kept a long time praying to God. Na baada ya hiyo kila wakati muda wote nilikuwa ninaendelea kumuomba Mungu. And one day I cried to Jesus. Na siku moja nikamwelelea Yesu. I said, Lord Jesus. Nikamwambia Yesu, ewe Yesu. A mighty power went through me. Ana huo uwezo wa nguvu za Mungu zikaniingia. And I said this is great. Nikasema hii ni ajabu. I can experience his response right away. Ninaweza kushuhudia mwito kuitikia kwake wakati huu. So I keep praising God. Nikaendelea kumtukuza Mungu. And I kept experiencing his power. Na nikaendelea kushuhudia wema na nguvu zake. And then in one day in the meeting I experienced the joy of the Lord. Siku moja nikiwa kwa mkutano nikashuhudia furaha ya Bwana. I was rejoicing all the way. Hallelujah. Nikawa ninashangilia ndani ya moyo wangu. Oh hallelujah hallelujah Mungu. 
I really treasure that. Now in these few days when I pray for people, some people experience the joy too. But in some places I went to, some people were filled with the joy of the Lord and laughed for a long time. I really treasure the joy of the Lord. And for the whole meeting, I kept loving God so the joy stays. And when I went home in a public bus, I want to keep the joy because I don't want to lose it. But I could not laugh out loudly. I could not laugh out loudly. So I did this. In my heart was loving God and let the joy keep coming. And when I went home, I wanted to keep the joy. I kept praying. And every day after that, now any time I think of Jesus, even in the middle of the night, any time I think of Jesus, his joy will come to me and his love Na will come to me wake too. Zana. And I feel a power going through me. Nina nguvu nani yangu. It makes me feel very comfortable and very joyful and loved. Nikiwa na na kupendu pia. And I said, that is great. And I, I said, this is wonderful to have this close relationship with God. And a few days after that experience, someone asked me to pray for her. To lay hand on her and cast out demons. And the person said she experienced power when I prayed for her. And I didn't realize that, that I can have the power of God so soon. Uh, Soon after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I prayed ba for some people. Ya kushudia, guvu za takativu, watu. And two of them cried for one hour. Na watu wengine, wakapika nduru, wawili, wakapika nduru, moja. They said, all the burdens went away, all the sadness went away. Kwamba, and I said, this is wonderful. Nikasema, Hii ni ajabu. Then I can bless people like that. Kwa hivyo, watu hiyo. And so I pray for every member in my church. And also when I went out to preach, I also asked if I could pray for the people. And I came across miracles all the time. People were healed of sickness. And the first time was like this. I pray for some people in a church. And I after asked them what they experienced afterwards. And a woman jumped up and said, My backache is healed. And another woman jumped up. And said her shoulder pain was healed. This opened my eyes that the miracles of in a biblical time can still happen today. And also when I pray for people. I noticed I felt some power between my hand and the persons. And I asked the person, 
I asked the person, did they experience anything? And I noticed what they experienced is similar to my experience. Later, I have the chance to pray for non-Christians. And they too can experience the peace or the joy of the Lord. Or burdens go away. And I ask them what they have experienced. So they told me that they experienced a peace or their burdens go away. And I said to them, God has blessed you like that. Because God is very real. Do you please uh, do you, and then I said, do you want Jesus to continue to bless you? And they, they said, yes. And I told them the gospel and brought them to Jesus. Now, in this way, I have brought many people to Jesus. Sometimes people said, I have a friend, I try to bring him or her to Jesus, and they were not willing to believe. And I asked the person to bring this friend to me. And I told the person, God is very real and he can bless you right now. And I asked the person if he's willing for me to pray for him. He said he was willing. And after I prayed for them, I asked them what they experienced. And they experienced... They said the experience of, you know, the peace or the comfort of the Lord. And I said, God has blessed you like this. Do you want to continue to be blessed by Jesus? And then he was willing and I brought that person to Jesus. Now this has happened over and over again. In my church there were many miracles. People share about miracles all the time. Watu ushiriki amambo amenahusu miujiza kila wakati. And one of my church members asked me to visit her mom. She said that her mom is, is, has terminal sickness, has uh, terminal sickness that she will die. She will die. The, the mother will die. That she had heart attack, a stroke. Diabetes, diabetes, Ojostari, kidney failure, and she would die of kidney failure. failure. And so I went to the mother and prayed for her and asked her what she experienced. And she said she felt comfort. I said, are you willing to believe in Jesus so that he can continue to bless you? But she said she was not willing. Because she had, because she had worshipped Buddha many years. Now when I went to visit her, I also prayed for every church, uh, every family member there. And they all experienced the Holy Spirit. I brought all of them to Jesus. Now, I want to say at this point, the power of the Holy Spirit is not just for some people. It's for every person. If you are willing to put down all your sins and love God for as long as you can every day and the presence of God will be strong upon you. And you will have miracles similar to that too. And later I would 
you know, pray for each one of you. Na kila wakati nitaombea kila mmoja wenu. And help you how to maintain the presence of God. Na kukusaidia vile unaweza kutunza uwepo wa Bwana. But you must have an attitude of appreciation of God. Lakini lazima uwe na nia na moyo wa kumshukuru Mungu. And hunger for God. Na uwe na tamanio kwa ajili ya Bwana. You know for me for the whole day long Unajua mimi kwa ajili ya siku yote I try to love Jesus all the time Huwa ninatamani huwa napenda kumpenda Yesu kila wakati Even now when I'm preaching Hata saa hii wakati tunahubiri hivi My heart just like Jesus Oh moyo wangu unampenda tu Yesu Appreciate Jesus Ninahubiri Yesu And on the way here I remind the people in the car Ah kwa njia nili Kumbusha watu kwa tulipokuwa kwa gari try to pray all the way jaribuni kuomba kila wakati now many people are not used to that watu wengi hawajazoea hiyo hata wewe unajua hujazoea hiyo many people just live in the world watu wengi huishi tu katika dunia and don't think much about god hawafikirii sana juu ya mungu except when they are in a church lakini tu wanapokuwa kanisani ndio wanajua oh kumbe mungu yuko but We want to love God all day long. Nataka tumpende Mungu siku yote katika maisha. And the presence of God will be strong upon you. Na uwepo wa Mungu utakuwa juu yako na nguvu. So now I go back to that woman I pray for the old woman I pray for. Sasa nirudi kwa yule mama niliyemwombea. She was not willing to believe in Jesus because she worshiped Buddha many years. Huyo mama hakuwa na nia ya kumwamini Mungu kwa sababu ameabudu sanamu ya Buddha kwa miaka mingi. But I, in the process I pray for every of her family member and I brought them to Jesus. And I pray for this woman a number of times. And I was very busy I did not visit her anymore. But half a year later, I suddenly receive a call from the daughter. Simu ya rununu kutoka kwa mtoto wake. The daughter told me to visit her mom right away. Oh, huyo msichana akaniambia kwamba inastahili nimtembee mama yake haraka iwezekanavyo. She said, you know, I asked her what happened. Why why her mother wants me to come? Nikamuuliza huyu mama ananitaka na lengo gani? She said the mom in that day suddenly said to her, Come again. She said that her mom said to her suddenly. Oh, akasema kwamba mama yake amemtuma. Why didn't Pastor Yib come today? Kwa nini Pastor Yib asikuje leo? Now I haven't gone there for half a year. Ni mwaka nusu ya mwaka umeisha sijaenda hapo. But she asked the question as if I've been there a few days ago. Kina akauliza swali ni kama nimekuwa hapo tu juzi. Why didn't Pastor Yib come today? Kwa nini Pastor Yib asikuje tu hata kama ni leo? I haven't gone for half a year. Amemaliza nusu ya mwaka kabla hajaenda. So the daughter immediately asked me to come. Sasa msichana yake huyo binti yake akaniomba kwamba nikaweze kufika hapo. And I pray for her. Na nikamwombea. And asked her how she felt. Nikamuuliza ulijisikia aje? She felt she said she felt great comfort. Akasema kwamba alijisikia akiwa amefarijika sana. Because of the kidney failure. Kwa sababu ya figo iliyokuwa imekoma kufanya kazi. She was in pain all the time. Alikuwa kila wakati yeye ana uchungu tu. So I pray for her again and ask her what she experienced. Nikamwombea na nikamuuliza anajisikia aje? And she says she experienced comfort again. Akasema kwamba anajisikia kufarijika tena. And I asked her, did Buddha help you like that? Did Buddha help you like that? Akamuuliza wewe umekuwa ukifuata Buddha kila wakati ukiabudu Buddha. Buddha huyu amekuwa akikusaidia kwa hii kiwango. And she said, no, Buddha didn't help her. Akasema hata huyo Buddha hajawahi kunisaidia. I said Jesus have, has helped you like that. Nikamwambia kwamba Yesu ndiye amekusaidia hiyo kiwango. Do you want to believe in the real God or the false God? Sasa unataka kuamini Mungu wa kweli ama Mungu wa uongo? And she said she was willing to believe in the real God. Akasema kwamba mimi natamani kumwamini Mungu aliye Mungu wa kweli. So I, I brought her to Jesus. Nikamuelekeza kwa Yesu and I bap, and I baptized her. Nikampatiza and the miracle is The miracle is. Na mujisa ukawa kwamba. Now please look here. Please look here. This is very important. Anasema kwamba mwachana na mambo ya watoto mwangalio kwa hiyo mambo ni ya muhimu. That was the last day that woman was totally conscious for the whole day. 
That was the last day. He was, she was totally conscious for the whole day. I hiyo ndio siku ambayo huyu mama alikuwa na ameumia kwa siku yote. After that day, baada ya siku hiyo, part of the day she was unconscious. So, she, was, she was unconscious without feeling but not asleep or deep sleep, you know, sasa, not knowing what's happening. Sasa ikawa kwamba ako katika hali ambao halali hajisiki vizuri. So that was the day, the last day she was totally conscious for the whole day. Sasa hiyo ndio iliyo sikuwa siku ya mwisho huyu mama kutokusikia akiwa na amani na furaha na kusikia vizuri. And she suddenly asked for me na akaniuliza I believe it's a work of God to remind her about me. Kamwambia kwamba hiyo inaona kwamba ni kazi ya Mungu kumfanya yeye anikumbuke mimi. And she asked for me while she was conscious. Akaniuliza ni kwa nini sijakuwa nikisikia vizuri? So that she has a chance to believe in Jesus. Kwamba akaweze kuwa na nafasi ya kumwamini Yesu. And after that day the daughter said, Na baada ya hiyo siku huyo bindi akasema, that she told her children and her grandchildren Believe in Jesus. Jesus is good. Kao kwamba ameambia watoto wake na watoto wa watoto wake kwamba wamwamini Yesu kwa sababu Yesu ni mwema na ni wa kweli. And one night in the middle of the night, siku moja usiku wa manane, she opened her eyes, akafungua macho yake, and she looked at the ceiling from one side to another, na akaangalia ceiling board kutoka pande moja hadi pande nyingine, and she was smiling. Na akawa anacheka na kutapasamu. The daughter felt very comforted. Huyo msichana akajisikia ako na furaha ya ajabu. Because of her pain and sickness, kwa sababu ya uchungu na maumivu yake, she did not talk much for a long time. Hakuweza kuongea kwa muda mrefu. And she has not laughed for a long smile for a long time. Na amemaliza muda mwingi hajawahi kucheka wala kutabasamu. But on that night when the mother Look at the ceiling from one side to another and she smiled. Lakini siku hiyo mama yake alipokuwa anaangalia juu ya ya paa ya nyumba na kurekesha mali kwa pande nyingine akawa anacheka. The the daughter felt comforted. Sasa msichana akawa amefurahia sana. She was so happy to see her mother smile. Kawa amefurahia kwa kuona mama yake akiwa anacheka na kutapazamu. The fact that she was looking from one side to another side and smiling. Sababu tu kwamba alikuwa anaangalia juu ya paa ya nyumba pande hii na pande hii na kucheka. Made the daughter believe that she was seeing some vision. Sasa bindi yake akaamini kwamba kwa mtazamo huo labda kuna maono fulani ambaye alikuwa anayaona. It could be a vision of heaven, angels or Jesus. Naweza kuwa ni maono ya kibinguni ama ya malaika wa Bwana ama maono ya Yesu. And the whole family believe in Jesus. Sasa familia yote ikaamini Yesu. Now this is one example of me doing evangelism by laying hand on people and praying. Sasa huu ni mfano wa mimi kwa kufanya uinjilisi na kuwekelea mikono juu ya watu na Mungu akijidhihirisha. Now in a time I visited a uh, family uh, you know a family that the daughter comes to the church. Ah uh, siku moja nikatembelea msichana ambaye huwa anakuja kanisani. And when I ring the doorbell na nilipofinya mlango wa kengele ya ya gate You know the the daughter believed in Jesus. Mustana ana mimi ndani ya Yesu. But the family have idols at home. Lakini nayo jamii ina masanamu na vitugo zingine za wao wanao mzi yao. And next to the idol there were two electric candles. Na kando na hiyo kulikuwa na taa zingine za stima. Because you know for Chinese they usually put candles uh, or, or burning incense uh, with the, at a uh, idol. Unajua kulingana na kule India huwa wanaweka sanamu na vitu zingine za kuabudu katika milango zao. And the moment I ring the doorbell, wakati nilifinya tu kengele ya mlangoni, both candles burn out instantly. Sasa zile taa za kuwaka zile zikasima mara moja zote mpaka zikachomeka. And then the grandmother saw that the light burn out instantly when I ring the doorbell. Sasa mama akaona kwamba muta amefinya kengele na hizo taa zimechomeka. And then also later when they replace the light bulb sasa wakati waliponunua zingine wakaziweka they burn out too tena zikachomeka tena so the grandmother said this is a miracle sasa nyanya akawatu akasema hii sasa hii kwa hii boma huu ni muujiza there must be something about jesus lazima kuwe na kitu tofauti ambao zinamhusu yesu and the whole family believe in jesus na familia yote ikaamini yesu Let me tell you we we still living in the age of miracles. Nakwambia kwamba bado tunaishi katika enzi ya miujiza. Don't think that it's not 
You know, it's not real. In these few days when I pray for different people, uh, many people felt burdens go away and they feel very light. And there were people who saw visions of Jesus. Or they heard God talking to them. I want to tell you, God is very real. And Jesus has promised us. Na Yesu ametuahidi, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you receive power to be my witness from Jerusalem to the end of the world. Yesu akatuahidi kwamba roho Mungu atakapokujilia juu yetu, tutakuwa mashahidi wake kuanzia Judea, Jerusalemu na dunia yote. Let me ask you, do you believe in that miracles are still real today? Could you raise your hand if you believe that miracles are still real today? Okay, thank God, thank God. A second question. How many of you pray for people and then they experience miracles? When you pray for someone. Well, thank God there are so many, I mean still so many hands. But I see there are less hands than before. Now, but why don't people, everyone, every Christian have many miracles? Because we just don't have the habit of praying for people. Because And very often we don't really believe that miracles can happen. And I hope you all believe God is very real. God loves us all the time. Mungu anatupenda kila wakati. He wants to bless us all the time. Anataka kutubariki kila wakati. So we can live in the presence of God all the time. Kwamba kila wakati tukaweze kuishi katikati ya uwepo wa Mungu kila wakati. And carry the power of God to pray for people. Na tupokee nguvu za Mungu kwa ajili ya kuombea watu. And lead them to Jesus. Na kuwaelekeza kwa Yesu. Do you want to do that? Natamani kufanya hayo? Do you have compassion on the people around you? Do you want them saved? Do you want this country changed? People said the percentage of Christians in Kenya is very high. But people said Many of these so-called Christians don't go to church. Or their lifestyle doesn't show that they are Christians. So we need a revival here. Revival is not just people experiencing the Holy Spirit. Revival is when people really have a close relationship with God and willing to dedicate your life to evangelism and raising up the spiritual life of people. So, do you want a revival? Let me tell you, the revival can come to your heart right now. You don't have to wait for God to do something for you to be revived. Some people have this concept, oh God, when will the New revival come and they think God will bring the revival. They think that God will not, do not want to bring the revival. But actually God wants to revive us any time. When you just say, Lord, I really need you. I want to repent on my sins. I want to give my life to you. I want to have a close relationship with you. And bring people to Jesus. And bring people to love Jesus and follow Jesus. 
za Yesu You cannot be sure about the revival to the other people. But you can be sure of the revival to your life. Even today. And you understand that revival is not just experience. But you really see God as someone very important. Then you're willing to pray all the time. Because without the presence of God, we cannot do much. That is what Jesus said. He who is in me and I'm in him and he will bear much fruit. If he is not in me, he cannot do anything. So the first thing is that we really live in the presence of God. And say, God is so wonderful. I want to really give my life to Jesus. Now, in many meetings, I pray for people. Now, first, I'd like to ask you to look at me. Don't look at the children. Now, in in many meetings, I pray for the people and told the people to keep loving God and not to look around. Especially after the experience of the work of God. But when I turn, when I look around, I saw these people after experience Holy Spirit Jesus look around. Or talk. And have not much response to God. In 1998, when I experienced the Holy Spirit. I really said that is really great. Then I can have this close relationship with God. And I can handle all my sins. And when I pray for people, I saw so many people healed. Or demons driven out. Or believe in Jesus. Then I said, God, you can change my life so much. And I can be used by God so much. I don't know, I don't want to waste my life. I don't know, I don't want to waste your work in me. So I really responded with my whole life. And I hope that you, you believe that too. When you know that God is real. He can use you greatly. When you are revived by God and really follow God. When you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added to you. He will bless your whole life. Let me tell you, I experience blessings all the time. Let me ask you first, how many of you experience blessings from God? You experience help and different kinds of blessings. Could you raise your hand? Okay, thank God. God is working in your life. But I want to tell you that when you follow God more, there will be more and more blessings. And your life can go higher and higher. You know, I thank God after the experience of the Holy Spirit. My ministry was continually raised up by God. And I saw many people revive. <laughs> and I saw many people revive. 
and God gave me good teaching to na, train people. Mungu mazuri kwa ya kufundisha watu. Whenever I go to a place the people say come back again. Hata anapoenda mali watu wanatamani kwamba nirudi tena mali pale. They also say can you go to the other places too? Wanaweza kusema kwamba unaweza kuenda mali pengine tena? God has opened doors for me. Mungu amemfungulia milango ndio sababu wako hapa. And there are people who are greatly touched by the work of God. Na kuna watu ambao wanaguzwa saiti na kuinulia kwa ajili ya kazi ya Mungu. I want to tell you that your life can be raised up like that too. Taka kuambia kwamba maisha yako yanaweza kuinuliwa hivyo pia. Don't despise your life. Usijidharau, usidharau maisha yako wewe. Don't waste your life. Usiharibu maisha yako. If you see somebody throw his wallet his money into the sea the oh, ocean unapoona mtu kwamba amechukua pesa zake na kibeti chake anatupa kwenye bahari you say don't throw it away give it to me unamwambia kwamba usitupe hiyo pesa mimi nahitaji pesa but i tell you many people are not just throwing away money nakwambia kwamba watu wengi sio kwamba wanatupa tu pesa they are throwing away their life lakini wanatupa maisha yao You can be greatly used by God. Unaweza kutumika na Mungu kwa njia kuu. You can bless many people. Unaweza kubarikisha watu wengi. And you can be raised up by God to a high level. Unaweza kuinuliwa na Mungu kwa kiwango ya juu. I like to share with you a few things how God has blessed me. Ah, ninataka kushiriki na nyinyi vitu chache ambazo Mungu amenibariki mimi. To encourage you to hunger for God. Kwa ajili ya kuatia moyo na kuwa shauku na Mungu. I'm 65 years old. Sasa vile unamuona hivi unamuona ni kijana. Ako na But God gives me a sharp mind. Lakini ukimuona hivi akili zake ziko sharp wewe. And a strong body. Na unaona hata mwili wake akifanya hivi misisi inatokea. And I play tennis. Na anapiga ile mpira ya tap shoot. <laughs> And give me the joy of the Lord. Na anampatia furaha ya moyo. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. The raw upako wa roho ya Mungu and great teachings na mafundisho ya ajabu he also gave me a wonderful wife sasa ako na mke unayeitwa mrembo wa ajabu i haven't seen another woman so wonderful as she is hata wala anaona hapa hakuna mrembo kama huyu wake she loves me anapenda huyu mke na kipara yake hii she loves me very much anampenda kabisa but she's also very wise na huyu mwanamke ako na akili si wakelelekelele you know When I go to many places the people said wow your teaching is very very good. Anapoenda kwa sehemu zingine watu wanasema kwamba mafundisho yako ni mazuri sana. But she would tell me how I can improve. Lakini wana huyo mke wake anamwambia kwamba ukitaka kubadilisha enda njia hii. When I see people I like to take her along. Ah uh, anapoona watu anapenda kushiriki na wao muda mrefu. And she would tell me what she has observed. Naye naye mke wake anamwambia kulingana na vile aliona wale watu. What she has heard from that person. Kile amesikia kutoka kwa mtu. That there are things that I have missed. Na hata kama yeye amefanya makosa mke wake anamwambia hapa mzee haukuenda poa. She's so wise that she can help me in my ministry. Ako na hekima nyingi kwamba anaweza kumsaidia anamwonyesha tena. But she always does it in a gentle way. Lakini anapomwambia anamwambia kwa roho ya upole sio kumpigia kelele. And God has given me the humility. Naye Mungu amempatia unyenyekevu. Every time when she says suggest something to me kile wakati anapomwambia wazo kumfikia or when other people suggest something to me watu wengine wanapopendekeza mambo kunihusu I always say thank you for your suggestion Mimi nasema kwamba mke wangu asante kwa mawazo yako Because if I want to go higher kwa sababu ninapotaka kwenda juu I have to accept the suggestions of people Lazima nikubali mashauri ya watu wengine God has, has been raising me up, up higher and higher. Mungu amekuwa akimuinua juu na juu zaidi. And he has provided for me so I can go to different countries. Naye amenisaidia kwamba ninaweza kuenda kwa mataifa mengine kama sahi yako Kenya. And open up, up open up doors for a um, ministry for me. Na anamfungulia milango kwa ajili ya huduma kwa ajili yake. Now when I do this I don't think of expanding myself. Ninapofikiria hivi sijioni mimi mwenyewe ama ninajaribu. All these are the work of God. Haya yote ni kwa ajili ya makusudi ya kazi ya Mungu. It's not me. Sio yeye. God chose me when I was weak. Mungu alimchagua alipokuwa kwamba yeye ni mdhaifu. God chose me when I have committed many sins. Oh Mungu alimuita wakati alikuwa ametenda dhambi nyingi kabisa. But God totally changed my life. Mungu akabadilisha tu maisha yangu. And he can do the same to you. Na anaweza kutenda haya hata kwa ajili ya wewe ambao umesikia. It's not us who are worthy. 
sio sisi tulio bora is god who want to raise up people ni mungu aliye na moyo wa kuinua watu so here i motivate you to be revived by god kwa hivyo hapa ninakupatia changamoto kwamba ukaweze kufufuliwa and to be willing to do evangelism na kuwa kwamba una moyo kwa ajili ya kufanya uingilisi Now here I talk about this method called experience God evangelism. Sasa nina hapa ninasema kwamba kushuhudia uingilisi wa kiungu. Now the biblical basis is that people can experience God's work. Ukweli wa Biblia ni kwamba watu wanaweza kushuhudia kazi ya Mungu. And I'm going to give you some Bible verses. Sasa tutawapatia vifungu vya Biblia. Please write this Bible verses Sasa down. Sasa chukua kalamu kama una kalamu uende kwa Luka ununue saa hii tukaange na watu hawaandiki. Wa, wa you don't have to look up the pers- uh, verses in the Bible. Hata usiposoma kwa Biblia saa hii because you won't have time to do that. Kwa sababu hatuna muda wa kufanya hii. You just write down and then remember these verses. Sasa uandike haya na ukumbuke maandiko ya noble kalamu kiwani. The first is John 14:27. Yohana 14:27. Yohana 14:27. There it says that peace I leave with you my peace I give you. Ah, uh, Biblia inasema kwamba amani yangu ninawapatia amani yangu idadum pamoja nanyi. There it says that Jesus can give us peace. Biblia inasema kwamba Yesu anaweza kutupatia amani. There are many people that I pray for. Kuna watu wengi ambao mimi huwa nawaombea. Then they experience calmness and peace. Na wanashuhudia utakazo na amani. Have you experienced that when you pray or praise God? Na uliza jinyi mnapoomba Mungu mnashuhudia mambo haya? Yes, that's very common. Hiyo ni jambo ambalo ni la kawaida. Now when you know the, what we experience, I'm going to tell you more verses. Unapo tambua kile unashuhudia atakuongezea mistari mingine it has a few use, uses a few uses a few ways you can use that wachache wanaweza kutumia mambo haya first you can use it to help yourself to have a closer relationship with god anaweza kutumia kwamba uwe na uhusiano ulio karibu na yeye na mungu when you pray and you feel peace coming to you unapoomba na usikie kwamba amani inakuja ndani yako you know god's presence strong upon you unajua kwamba uwepo wa mungu umekujilia kwa nguvu zote and then you open your heart more to love god na unafungua moyo wako kwa ajili ya kumpenda mungu more peace will come to you amani iliyotimilivi itakuja ndani yako and then you know how to raise up the You know the presence of God when you pray. Na unajua jinsi unaweza kuinua uwepo wa Mungu unapokuwa katika maombi. When I pray to God, ninapoomba kwa Mungu, I will put down all the burdens. Ninaweka mizigo yote kando. All the things I worry about. Yale mambo yote ambayo huwa yananisumbua nayaweka kando. And relax my whole person. Na sasa ninatulia mwili wangu wote. And I will enter a deeper and deeper peace. Na ninazama ninazama katika uh, afra. So you want to enter a deeper peace when you pray. Sasa unataka ukaribishe amani nyingi unapoomba. And you also want to experience the other work of God stronger and stronger. Na unataka pia kushuhudia nguvu za Mungu zikiwa na nguvu na nguvu na nguvu zaidi. Another verse is Matthew 11:28. Ah, msali mwingine ni Mathayo 11:28. Mathayo 11:28. Come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I'll give you rest. Zooni kwangu nyinyi nyote walio wanaosumbuliwa na kulemea na mizigo mizito nami nitawapumzisha. This is what many people experience. Hii ni mambo ambayo watu wengi hushuhudia. They feel burdens go away. Wanajisikia kwamba mizigo inawaondokea. They feel very light, no burdens. Wanajisikia wamekuwa kwamba wamekuwa wepezi hawana uzito tena. So you can use that too when you pray yourself. Sasa unaweza kutumia hiyo pia unapoomba wewe mwenyewe. Then you can experience more and more peace. Sasa utashuhudia amani iliyo nyingi. And the burdens go away. Na misigo itakuondokea. And then you know that the, you know the presence of God is becoming stronger. Na unajua kwamba uwepo wa Mungu unaendelea kuwa na nguvu zile otimilivu. And you can also help other people to experience God more. Na wewe unaweza kusaidia watu wengine wakaweze kushuhudia Mungu zaidi. And you this to do evangelism. Na unasaidi kufanya uinjilisti. So when you realize the work of the Holy Spirit, unapotambua kazi za Roho Mtakatifu, the uses are matumizi ni One it helps you to go deeper into strong in God's presence. Inakusaidia kuzama katika uwepo wa Mungu. 
Second, you can help other people or the whole church to go into the deeper presence of God. Number two, you can help other people or the whole church to go into the deeper presence of God. Number two, you can help other people or the whole church to go into the deeper presence of God. Number two, you can help other people or the whole church to go into the deeper presence of God. Number two, you can help other people or the whole church to go into the deeper presence of God. Number two, you can help other people or the whole church to go into the deeper presence of God. And number four, you can use it to raise up the spiritual life of people. Number four, you can use it to raise up the spiritual life of people. Number four, you can use it to raise up the spiritual life of people. Number four, you can use it to raise up the spiritual life of people. Number four, you can use it to raise up the spiritual life of people. Number four, you can use it to raise up the spiritual life of people. Number four, you can use it to raise up the spiritual life of people. Number four, you can use it to raise up the spiritual life of people. Number four, you can use it to raise up the spiritual life of people. Number four, you can use it to raise up the spiritual life of people. Number four, you can use it to raise up the spiritual life of people. Number four, you can use it to raise up the spiritual life of people. Number four, you can use it to raise up the spiritual life of people. Number four, you can use it to raise up the spiritual life of people. Number four, you can use it to raise up the spiritual life of people. Number four, you can use it to raise up There it says that the Holy Spirit can pour the love of God into our hearts. Roa mungu anaweza kuachilia nguvu kwa ajili ya mioyo yetu. That is what I experienced in 1998. Hiyo ni mambo ambayo niliyoshuhudia mwaka wa 98 na 8. And every time I pray now, na kila wakati sasa ninapoomba, I can feel the love of God every time. Nikisikia upendo wa Mungu kila wakati. I can feel the joy of the Lord every time. Life become much more enjoyable. I hope you hunger for that. That you really say yes I want that. And then Psalm 16 verses 8 to 9. Saburi 16 Mustari wa nane, saburi kumi na sita, mustari wa nane hadi wa tisa. That I've said the Lord always before me. Ah, nimeona mbwana mbele yangu kila wakati. And then my heart is glad, my tongue rejoices, and my body will rest secure. Moyo wangu unafraia, mwili wangu unafraia, na mwili ro yangu imewekwa katika fry to believe. There is says that in the presence of God. Katika uwepo wa Mungu. My heart will be joyful. Moyo wangu utafurahia. And my body will rest secure. Naye mwili wangu utakuwa katika ulinzi wa ajabu. Then my body can rest. Naye mwili wangu utatulia na kupumzika. And I can feel comfort. Nami nitasikia kufarijika. Now this is talking about God can bless our body. Hii inasema kwamba Mungu anaweza kubariki mili zetu. Many people say they feel the body very light. Watu wengine wanasema kwamba wamesikia mili ziko nyepesi sana. Or comfort to the, comes to the body. Wakati faraja zimekuja kwa ajili ya mwili. Now some people say well well God's word is just for the spirit, right? Why not why why for the body? Wanasema kwamba roho wa Mungu ni kwa ajili ya moyo, kwa nini mwili? But we realize that God created body. Lakini tunatambua kwamba Mungu aliumba mwili. So he can bless our body too. Kwamba akaweze kubariki mili zetu pia. And also the Bible says that Jesus can heal the sick. Naye Biblia inasema kwamba Yesu anaponya wagonjwa. So God can bless the body by healing. Kwa hivyo Mungu anaweza kubariki mwili kwa uponyaji. And he can make people feel comfort. Na anaweza kufanya watu wafarijike. I share with you two cases very strong. Anawaambia kwamba kunayo kesi mbili ambazo ziko na nguvu sana. One time I was in a hospital. Siku moja alikuwa amelazwa hospitalini. And saw one person going through chemotherapy for cancer. Na akaona mtu anaenda katika upasuaji kwa ajili ya saratani. And I asked him how he felt. Na akauliza huyo mtu ulisikia aje? He said he felt great discomfort. Akasikia kwamba alikosa amani kabisa. And I share with him about the work of God. Nikashirike na yeye kazi ya Mungu. And I said, are you willing to pray for you? Nikamuuliza kwamba unajisikia kwamba ninaweza kuomba pamoja na wewe? And he said he was willing. Akasema mimi ninatamani. And then I pray for him. Na nikamuombea. And asked him how what he experienced. Na akamuuliza unajisikiaje? He said I felt great comfort. Akasikia akasema kwamba nimesikia kufarijika. So I led them to believe in Jesus. Nikamuelekeza kuamini Yesu. And teach him how to pray. Na kumfundisha jinsi ya kuomba. Now that was the first time and the last time I saw him. Ilikuwa mara ya kwanza na mara ya mwisho nilipomuona. But a few months later I her daughter called me. Baada ya siku kadhaa bindi yake akanipigia simu. Her father has passed away. Akaniambia kwamba baba yake ameaga. But she has found my card. Lakini amepata kadi yake ya contact. Because the father has told her what she ex he experienced in the hospital. Sababu baba yake alikuwa amemueleza kile alipohisi wakati tuliomba. And then the man went home. Na kijana jamaa mzee akaenda nyumbani. And had pain. Na akawa na uchungu. And he prayed again in Jesus name. Na akaomba tena kwa jina la Yesu. And he felt comfort to come to his body. Na kwamba akona furaha na amefarijika. 
And he said Jesus really works. Na akasema kwamba kweli Yesu anafanya kazi. So he was willing to believe in Jesus. Kwa hiyo akawa kwamba ana tamaa ya kumwamini Yesu. So the daughter called me to do the funeral Mas- the, for the, for for her father. Msikana akanipigia simu kwamba nikaweze kufanya utaratibu wa mazishi kwa ajili ya baba yake. And then I I told her, you know, I have prayed for your father to experience God. Nilikamwambia kwamba mimi niliombea baba yako kwamba akahisi Mungu. At that time she was with her sister. Na wakati ule alikuwa na dada yake. And I said, are you willing that I pray for both of you on the phone? Akamuuliza kwamba unajisikia kwamba nikaweze kuomba pamoja nanyi katika simu ya rununu? So she put the phone on speaker mode. Akaweka speaker uh, simu yake kwa loud speaker. And then the both of both of them can hear my prayer. Ili kwamba wote wawili wakaweze kusikia maombi yake. After the prayer I asked them what they experienced. Nilipomaliza kuomba tu kwa simu nikamuuliza mmejisikia aje? They said they felt the body floating, very light floating. Wakasema kwamba walisikia mili yao ikikuja kuwa mipezi na mipezi zaidi. So I told them this is the work of God. Nikamwambia kwamba hii hakika ni kazi ya Mungu. Are you willing to believe in Jesus? Mnajisikia kwamba mnaweza kuamini Yesu? And I let both of them believe in Jesus. Nikawaelekeza tu kwa simu nikawaelekeza kumwamini Yesu. And they were later baptized in my church. Na wakawa wanafuatilia kwamba waje kanisani. So I have done things like this all the time. Kwa hivyo mambo kama haya ninayofanya mara